Hello all, it's Grandma again. I have a kind of a different story here for you today. Um, this is a story of a great queen, and her name is Esther. Now, the story of Esther comes from the Bible, and this is one of the stories in there that is, um, it's kind of a folk tale. We don't, I don't know if it's actually true or not, but it's a cool story. Um, and the Bible has lots of things in it, like, well, it has lots of things to tell you how to be good and how to love each other and, and how not to be a bad person. But it also has lots of really interesting folk tales. Uh, so this is one of them. This is about Esther. Now, this is at a time when, um, King, the king of Persia was named Cyrus. And um, where was I? Ah, okay. Um, and uh, a bunch of the Israelites who had been uh, taken as slaves in Persia were told that they could go home, but some of them stayed. Uh, and amongst one of them who stayed in Persia was a man named Mordecai, who was a man of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, he was an officer of the king, and his little cousin, Esther, lived with him because her father and mother had died, and so Mar Mordecai cared for her. Now, King Xerxes was now the ruler of the Persian Empire. In the Bible, he is sometimes called Ahasuerus. Um, and, and he is in his palace in Sushan, and he decided to have a big feast for all of his friends. Now, it was uh, not possible for, peop for men and women to eat together at a banquet in that time. Women had to eat separately. So the queen, whose name was Vashti, made a special dinner for the women. And on the day of the festival, and the, uh, the king is having his big dinner with, um, uh, with his friends, he commanded that the queen should come to his feast so that the men could see her great beauty. Um, and in some of the versions of this story, it says that he wanted uh, her to dance for them. Well, Queen Vashti said that she wasn't going to go dance in front of a bunch of drunken men, because they probably were drunk. Now, the king was very angry, and so he took her down from being queen and threw her out of the palace. So sometime later, the king decided to choose another queen from amongst the most beautiful maidens of the empire. Messengers went to all the provinces, inviting maidens to appear at the king's palace. Esther, the co uh, cousin of Mordecai, was taken to the palace with the other girls. After months of training, she was presented to the king, and he chose her to be her queen, his queen. Now, Esther was a very beautiful woman, and she was accomplished and educated, and she was kind. Esther was loved by all her servants and soon became a favorite in the palace. Since she lived in a royal house, Mordecai could not visit her. Nevertheless, every day as he walked to and fro in the courtyard, um, he walked to and fro in the courtyard near her window so that she could see him. Now, as an officer of the king, Mordecai sat at the palace gate. One day, he overheard the plot of two angry servants. They were planning to kill King Xerxes. Mordecai sent a special message to Queen Esther, and she told the king. So these men were discovered, and they were hanged. About this time, Haman, a prince of the court, was promoted, and the king commanded that the other officers should bow to him. So Mordecai, being a good Jew, would not bow to Haman because he was taught to bow and worship to God alone. So the servants saw that Mordecai refused to bow, and they told Haman, Oh, this proud man, he's, um, 
They told Haman, this proud man, he was filled with rage, and he dared not lay hands on a loyal officer. So what could he do? Hmm. Soon he decided on an evil plan. Since Mordecai was a Jew, Haman approached King Xerxes and says, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed amongst the people through all the provinces of your kingdom, and their laws are different from your laws, and they don't observe your laws. Therefore, it is not fitting to leave them alone. If it please the king, let it be prescribed that they may be destroyed, and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those who do that accounting, that they may bring it into the king's treasuries. So the king did not know about the evil purpose of Haman, for he trusted this officer to do what was right. Furthermore, he did not know that Queen Esther was a Jew. King Xerxes signed the letter commanding the nation to kill all the Jews on a certain day, and the messengers carried the edict to all the empire. When Mordecai heard of the decree, he tore his clothes and he mourned deeply. He knew this law was dooming his people to destruction. There was only one hope. Perhaps Esther could save these innocent and helpless people. So, uh... Queen Esther learned that Mordecai was mourning, and she did not know why, so she sent him beautiful garments. But Mordecai would not accept them, and finally he told the servant to tell Esther what was happening. The queen was stunned by this message from Mordecai. What could she do? The law said that no one could come before the king who was not summoned by him unless the monarch held out their go his golden scepter to him. So trusting the Lord to help his people, Mordecai sent this word to the queen. Think not to yourself that you will escape inside that royal palace any more than the rest of us Jews. For if you remain altogether silent at this time, then relief and deliverance will rise up for the Jews from another quarter. But you have not come to this kingdom for such a time as this. So Mord uh, Esther received this challenge, and she sent a message back to Mordecai. Go and assemble all the Jews that are found in Shushan, which is where, where he was living, and fast for me, said Eth Esther. Don't eat or drink for three days, and pray. And I and my maidens will do the same. And then I will go to the king, which is not according to the law, and if I die, I die. So on the third day, Queen Esther put on her beautiful robes, and she went to the door of the throne room. King Xerxes, seated on his throne, was surprised to see his queen. He held out his golden scepter, and Esther drew near, and she touched it. What is your, your wish, Queen Esther? asked the king. It shall be given you even to half of the kingdom. If it please the king, said Esther, let the king and Haman come today to a banquet that I have prepared for him. So the king and Haman went to the banquet that Esther had prepared. Then the king asked Esther what she desired. The queen replied demurely, My petition and my request is, if I have found fa favor in the sight of the king, if it please the king to grant my petition, and perform my request. Let the king and Haman come to my banquet that I shall prepare for them tomorrow, and then I will do as the king has said. Haman was so proud to be the special guest of the queen that he rushed home to tell his wife what had happened. Oh, even Esther the queen, Haman said, has permitted no man but me to come in with the king to the banquet that she prepared. And tomorrow I am invited by her together with the king. Yet all this does not satisfy me so long as I see Mordecai the Jew and he's still not bowing. Haman's wife and his friends proposed that a high gallows should be built, and in the morning he should ask the king for permission to hang Mordecai. Haman liked that idea, and he had the gallows erected at once. That night the king could not sleep. To help him pass the hours, he had his servants bring the record books of the kingdom and read to him. 
Now in the record was the account of the two traitors who had planned to kill the king and how Mordecai had saved Xerxes' life. Hmm, what honor and dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this, said the king. Oh, nothing has been done for him, says the servants, scanning the records. By the time, by this time, it was early morning. Haman had risen and made his way to the palace to request the death of Mordecai. At that moment, his footsteps were heard in the hall. The king, thinking of the traitors who once had almost taken his life, called out, who is in the court? A servant announced, Behold, Haman is standing in the court. Let him enter, said the king. So Haman came in, and the king said to him, What shall be done to the man whom the king delights to honor? Haman said to himself, Hmm, who would the king delight to honor more than me? So he said he tried to picture all of the things he would like to have. Oh, for the man whom the king delights to honor, said Haman, let royal garments be brought, which the king has worn, and a horse which the king has ridden, on the head of which a royal crown is set. Let the garments and the horse be delivered to one of the king's most noble princes, and let them clothe the man whom the king delights to honor, and cause him to ride on horseback throughout the open square of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Make haste, and take the garments and the horse, as you have said, commanded the king. And then do this for Mordecai the Jew, who sits at the king's gate. I have never rewarded him yet, and let's not let anything fail of what you have spoken. Haman's mouth must have dropped open in surprise. Here he must lead a horse through the man with Mordecai, the man he hates most, riding on it in royal splendor. That honor he had dreamed would have come to him, and it fell on his most hated enemy. Haman rushed home weeping because of what had happened. When his wife heard the news, she wisely said, Well, if Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, be of the Jewish race, you will make no headway against him, but will surely fall before him. It was on the day of, the Queen, of Queen Esther's second banquet. Whatever your petition, Queen Esther, and it shall be granted to you, said Xerxes, while he and Haman were enjoying the party. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king, let my life be given uh, me at my petition and my people at my request, pleaded Esther. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed and to be slain and to perish. Who is he, and where is he who dares presume in his heart to do so? Said the king. An adversary and an enemy. This wicked Haman, said Esther, pointing to the man at the table next to them. Well, Haman was horrified when he saw how angry the king looked. Xerxes rose from the banquet, banquet and he went out into the garden. Now he saw through that evil plot of Haman to kill all these and innocent people. At once the king was in a rage. He must punish this prince for his wicked deeds. A servant who sat near the king suggested, There is indeed a gallows of fifty cubits high standing in the house of Haman, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good on behalf of the king. Then he shall be hanged on it, said the king, and thus Haman's fate was sealed. Then the king sent special messengers riding swiftly to all the provinces in the empire, telling the Jews to gather in groups and to fight for their lives on the day that had been set for their destruction. So the Jews gathered in armed bands, but when their enemies heard of the king's second decree, they dared not attack the Jews. Angels of God protected his people while they stood bravely for their lives. And so Esther saved the lives of her people and her own life by her faithfulness in time of grave danger. I'll have to show you a couple of pictures now.
sheet. Now here is a picture of Queen Esther um, with the king. And here's, let's see, yep, there's, there's a picture of the king in bed and he can't sleep, so people are reading to him. And there's a picture of Haman having to lead the horse while Mordecai was uh, all dressed up in the robes and crown and being praised. And here at the end is, is the Jews who are all huddled together and waiting for this bad day to be op over. And because the king had told them to gather together and defend themselves, then the people that were going to kill them didn't dare to touch them. So I think that's a really interesting story, and it reminds me of a lot of the fairy tales that we have in, in some of the other um, books that we've got. You know, we've got, uh, we've got a good servant, and we've got a really bad guy who is um, a, a bad advisor for the king, and we've got a king, and we've got a queen, and interestingly enough, the king doesn't actually know who the queen is, and that happens sometimes in fairy tales too. But, um, uh, and and she has she has banquets for him to try to kind of lure him in and make him make him feel happy before she asks him for a favor. So it's kind of interesting. And I think at some point I will go ahead and read some more out of these books. I have um, I have a story also about Samson. And since this is getting kind of long, I'll put that on on another video. So I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.